Tonight, we witness a seismic shift in the skies. Just a few years ago, America tried to ground China's aerospace ambitions by restricting advanced jet engine sales. The idea, without American engines, China's C919 jet would never get off the ground. But here in December 2025, that strategy has backfired. Instead of retreating, China doubled down, pouring resources into building its own engines. The ban, meant as a roadblock, became a launch pad. Today, COMAX C9 Rantine is flying commercial routes with a domestically built CJ1000A engine. This isn't a prototype, it's real, and it's sending shockwaves from Seattle to Toulouse. The attempt to contain China's aerospace sector has created the very competitor it sought to prevent. For China, this is more than a technical win. It's a geopolitical statement. The U.S. bet that its technological lead was unassailable. That bet has failed. The C-919 story is a cautionary tale about the limits of economic pressure and the unpredictable force of national pride. The world is watching as a new competitor takes flight. The question now, what happens when a sleeping giant, challenged, decides to build its own wings? The answer is unfolding at air shows and airports across Asia. The skies are no longer the West's exclusive domain. A new era in global aviation has begun. To understand this moment, we need to rewind. For decades, Boeing and Airbus dominated commercial aviation, a duopoly built on complex supply chains and technological barriers. Washington's plan protect this advantage by targeting the jet engine, the most challenging part of any aircraft. By restricting engine sales to COMEC, U.S. policymakers believed they could cap China's progress. Without a world-class engine, the C919 would never be a global contender. The hope? China would either abandon the project or settle for inferior engines, making the C919 uncompetitive. The global aviation market is worth trillions, and China is its fastest-growing segment. Keeping COMAC sidelined would secure Western jobs and profits for decades. The engine ban was a calculated risk, one Washington felt it had to take. But the logic was simple. No engine, no competition. Few anticipated how China would respond. That miscalculation changed everything. China's response to the engine ban was swift and massive. The C9 Wangtai project became a national mission, no longer just a commercial venture, but a symbol of sovereignty. Billions poured into the Aero Engine Corporation of China, tasked with building a rival to GE and Rolls-Royce. China recruited global talent, invested in advanced materials, and built state-of-the-art testing facilities. Regulations were streamlined, and political support was unwavering. The ban became a rallying cry, fueling a Sputnik moment for China's tech sector. Engineers worked around the clock, driven by patriotism and urgency. The result? China's aerospace sector transformed from follower to innovator, faster than anyone in the West expected. The C-919's journey mirrors China's transformation. Early C-919s relied on Western engines, the Leap 1C from GE and Safran. This dependence was both a point of pride and a vulnerability. The turning point, the successful development and integration of the CJ-1000A engine. Swapping out the foreign engine required major modifications, but COMAC and AECC moved fast. By late 2025, C-999s powered entirely by Chinese technology were rolling off the line. Chinese airlines prioritized the all-Chinese jet, and production ramped up to meet demand. The C919 is now a symbol of self-reliance, not just participation. China's aerospace industry has come of age, ready to challenge the established order. The era of dependence is over. With its new engine, the C919 is a real challenger to Boeing and Airbus. It matches the 737 MAX and A320neo in size and range, perfect for Asia's busy routes. The CJ-1000A may be slightly less efficient than Western engines, but the gap is smaller than expected. COMAC competes on more than technology. It offers lower prices, state-backed financing, and political support. For many airlines in Asia, Africa, and Latin America, the C919 is an affordable, attractive alternative. Boeing and Airbus still have global support networks and safety records, 
but China is building its own ecosystem fast. Maintenance hubs, training centers, and parts networks are spreading along the Belt and Road. The C919 isn't just a plane, it's a complete aviation solution, bundled with infrastructure deals. The rules of the game are changing. Market share is no longer guaranteed by technology alone. The battle for the skies is now about economics, politics, and ambition. The engine band's economic blowback is hitting America hard. Boeing and its suppliers once saw China as their biggest growth market. Now, Chinese airlines are shifting orders from Boeing to Comac. This isn't just business, it's political. Every C-999 sold means fewer American jobs and lost revenue for U.S. companies. Thousands of suppliers across the U.S. are losing contracts as China replaces foreign parts with domestic ones. The ban, meant to protect American interests, has accelerated China's decoupling from U.S. supply chains, the result layoffs, slower production, and uncertainty for American workers. The policy designed to protect U.S. industry has become a self-inflicted wound. The cost is measured not just in profits, but in livelihoods. The unintended consequences are real and painful. For decades, airlines had two choices, Boeing or Airbus. That era is over. The duopoly is now a trio. Comac, backed by the Chinese state, isn't just chasing profits, it's pursuing strategic goals, independence, power, and influence. This makes Comac a disruptive competitor, willing to underbid and absorb losses to gain market share. The three-way race is fiercest in Asia, where airlines now have a third option. China links aircraft sales to broader investment and infrastructure deals, turning purchases into geopolitical statements. Boeing and Airbus must rethink their strategies, competing not just with each other but with a state-backed rival. They may need to cut prices, offer better financing, or form new partnerships. The predictable world of two players is gone. The market is now more complex, volatile, and political. The competition is about more than planes. It's about power. The C-919's rise is reshaping global influence. For years, Boeing and Airbus gave the West leverage over airlines and governments worldwide. Aviation sales were a tool of diplomacy and power. Now, China offers a non-Western alternative, giving countries a way to sidestep U.S. and European pressure. Every C-919 sold shifts the balance of power, building a Sinocentric sphere of influence. China's Civil Aviation Administration is emerging as a third regulatory force, fragmenting global standards. As more countries adopt the C-919, they align with China's rules. The skies are dividing into competing blocks. The contest is no longer just commercial, it's a battle for technological and political leadership. The unipolar moment is over. A multipolar world is taking shape, one airport at a time. The C-919 story is a paradox of power. America's engine ban, meant to preserve dominance, instead forged a formidable rival. The policy underestimated China's resolve and ability to mobilize resources. The ban turned a commercial project into a national crusade, accelerating innovation. True leadership isn't about blocking rivals, it's about out-innovating them. While China built a new engine, the U.S. focused on containment, not advancement. The result, a powerful, state-backed competitor emerged faster than anyone expected. The act of using power can create the very forces that diminish it. The C919, flying with a Chinese heart, is a symbol of unintended consequences. The future of aviation will be decided not by walls, but by who builds the best planes and the strongest partnerships. As the C919 took to the skies, the world watched and responded. Airlines from Southeast Asia to Africa weighed the promise of a new, cost-effective alternative to Boeing and Airbus. Some placed early orders, eager to diversify their fleets and reduce dependence on Western suppliers. Others waited, eyeing regulatory hurdles and the plane's track record. Governments faced a dilemma, embrace a new player and risk diplomatic friction, or stick with the established duopoly. Europe's aviation authorities scrutinized the C919 for certification, while emerging markets saw an opportunity to negotiate better deals and partnerships. Comac, once a domestic underdog, found itself navigating a complex landscape of international standards, local politics, and fierce lobbying from rivals. New partnerships emerged, with joint ventures and technology exchanges signaling a shifting balance of power. But challenges remained. Some countries hesitated, citing concerns over safety, 
support infrastructure, and political pressure. The C999's path to global acceptance was not guaranteed, but its very presence forced the world to rethink alliances, competition, and the future of flight. In this new era, every order, every partnership, every regulatory approval became a test, not just for COMAC, but for the entire global aviation industry. As the dust settles and the C-999 finds its place in the skies, the next decade is poised to reshape aviation in ways few could have imagined. The C-999's ascent has sparked a global race for innovation, not just in China, but across the industry. Chinese engineers, emboldened by their breakthrough, are already turning to the next frontier greener engines, autonomous flight systems, and digital cockpit technologies designed for a new generation of travelers. COMAC's rivals are responding in kind. Boeing and Airbus accelerate their own research, investing in hybrid electric propulsion and advanced materials to stay ahead. Startups and tech giants enter the fray, pushing boundaries with urban air mobility, supersonic travel, and even hydrogen-powered jets. The competition is no longer just about who builds the safest or fastest plane. It's about who can revolutionize the very experience of flight. Pause ones. Policymakers, too, are adapting. International aviation standards evolve to keep pace with rapid technological change. New alliances form linking countries and companies in unexpected ways. The old lines between East and West blur, replaced by a patchwork of partnerships driven by shared ambition and sometimes shared necessity. Pause once. By 2035, passengers might board aircraft designed and built through global collaboration, powered by engines that barely leave a carbon trace. Airports could hum with data-driven efficiency and pilots may share the cockpit with artificial intelligence. The C-999's legacy, then, will not just be a single aircraft, but a catalyst that launched a new era of global aviation, where innovation knows no borders and the sky is no longer the limit. As the C-999 takes flight, its ripple effects are felt far beyond the runways and skies. It's in the factories, ports, and boardrooms that make up the world's aerospace supply chain. China's rapid ascent has redrawn the map of global manufacturing, with suppliers from Asia, Europe, and even North America rethinking their roles and alliances. No longer just a customer, China is now a major player, demanding not just parts, but influence. Traditional suppliers to Boeing and Airbus find themselves at a crossroads, adapt to new standards, enter joint ventures with Chinese firms, or risk being left behind. For some, it's an opportunity to tap into China's booming aviation market. For others, it's a challenge as contracts shift and local Chinese companies close the technology gap. Meanwhile, countries with strong aerospace sectors, like Germany, France, and Canada, see new openings for collaboration, but also face pressure to balance business with geopolitics. Trade tensions and export controls force a delicate dance as companies weigh the promise of growth in China against the risk of government scrutiny at home. The C-999's success has also inspired a new wave of regional partnerships. Southeast Asian nations, India and Brazil invest in their own aerospace capabilities, hoping to avoid dependence on any single power. Global supply chains become more diversified and resilient, but also more complex as companies source parts from a wider network of partners. In this new reality, agility becomes the industry's most valuable currency. The winners will be those who can navigate shifting alliances, harness new technologies, and build trust across borders. The C-919 has not only changed who builds the planes, but how and with whom the world builds the future of flight. As the C-919's production ramps up and China's aviation ambitions soar, a new challenge takes center stage the environment. Every new aircraft rolling off the assembly line brings the promise of connectivity and economic growth, but also a pressing question. Can the boom in Chinese aviation be sustainable? China, now a global aerospace heavyweight, faces mounting pressure to curb emissions and adopt greener technologies. The government sets ambitious targets, from fuel-efficient engines to lighter composite materials and biofuel trials. The C9Y9 itself features modern, energy-saving designs, but the sheer scale of production poses a dilemma. More flights mean more carbon emissions, unless innovation keeps pace. International regulators are watching closely, 
As China seeks to export the C9Y9, it must navigate a maze of environmental standards set by the EU, US, and emerging markets. Meeting these benchmarks isn't just about engineering, it's about credibility. Airlines and passengers, increasingly climate conscious, demand transparency on emissions and life cycle impacts. The race for green aviation sparks a new wave of collaboration and competition. Chinese firms partner with global leaders in sustainable fuel and electric propulsion, while domestic startups push for breakthroughs in hydrogen power and smart manufacturing. Yet, regulatory hurdles remain. Approval for alternative fuels, adaptation of airport infrastructure, and the cost of retrofitting fleets all stand in the way. Still, the stakes are clear. The future of flight depends not just on who builds the most planes, but who builds the cleanest. The C999's environmental journey is just beginning, and its success or failure will help define whether the next era of aviation takes off under green skies or faces fresh turbulence from a warming world.